Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Prove your skill number two for autumn seasons is now in full swing. And once again I happen to be playing. That means I'm able to do yet another vlog about my clan walls experience. Again, I am privileged to be rolling out in Vale's second team and for day one of PYS2, we were lucky enough to get put into a rather nice group with no other top eight clans or teams. That's not to say you can underestimate those in your group because teams will always be able to surprise you. And if you go in too confident, thinking the team will be a pushover, trust me, you make silly mistakes and before you know it, it's all doom and gloom. Now let's get back to some real life facts Let's put them out there first. I personally have played this game since it hit the store way back in 2014. And yeah, 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 I've played a fair few QTs and a scattering of other tours. Nevertheless, I personally do not have the experience or the skill level to be totally confident at this level of the game. And believe me, it's a hell of a lot tougher than it looks. It's a totally different type of game. Yeah, 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 I know that a lot of you pros out there, this is pretty middle of the road stuff for you. Nothing to get overly excited about. I mean, POS number one and POS number two, pah, boring. But as a player who normally streams these tours from an up high vantage point as a spectator, an armchair general, so to speak, it's a real eye opener for me and a totally different experience and I've loved every single moment. On day one, we were faced off initially against the clan TR67, a clan that I'm not overly familiar with, if I'm being honest. They're an average win rate team, but as I said, that doesn't mean they're any less formidable. Out we were all on naval frontier with a battle plan, and it quickly transpired that poor old TR67 were actually not gonna be a match for us. That's not to say they were bad or anything of the sort, but facing a team filled with super unicums and seasoned clan wars players is extremely difficult to counter. And I have to give full credit to TR67 for not throwing in the towel. They actually went out and did their very best. And that is what it's all about, guys. Rolling out and just doing your best. Following the first game, the call was to go out in foshes or something similar. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting. Okay, as a commentator, I would most likely have said something along the lines of, oh, this is showing a little bit of disrespect or something similar, which, to be honest, is what a lot of people and commentators do say, oddly enough. Thing is, things are not always as they seem. Look, at this level of clan wars, it's really intense. It requires a lot of concentration and it can be really draining, especially mentally. To be able to let your hair down and have a little bit of fun is not disrespectful, but it's actually a real big welcome release. It settles the nerves for one, takes away some of the pressure that the players feel and it allows them to blow off a little bit of steam. The call that was made was never meant to disrespect the other team or anything of the sort but was to allow us, our team, to chill out and relax. Sitting in the player's chair rather than the commentator's chair has shown me a completely different side to the game and a lot of things are misunderstood by commentators and viewers alike. Take for example the last previous skill, number one, day three. Now I heard a lot of critique about a player from Loka drowning themselves on Port Bay rather than be killed. Quite a few people have raised concerns that this is somehow unsporting behavior or passive play, when I now know and understand that in some situations, such as that one, whereby Loka had zero chance to win, they were down on cap points, the last player for Loka was in a Vickers, he was a one shot, facing three tanks from the formidable team that is the Joneses, and they were all heavies. It was only ever gonna go one way total and utter defeat for Loka. At this level, the pros generally all know each other 
And no doubt, when faced with insurmountable odds, as the local player was, the decision to deny Jones the kill was just that, denying the kill. The action doesn't change a single thing, and oddly enough, it has the effect of boosting the confidence of the player killing themselves, because there's nothing worse than being totally wrecked. It's demoralizing. So not everything you see is done out of spite or with some malicious intent. There are other reasons, some of them psychological. Anyway, I digress. With the victory against TR-67, we went into the grand final on day one against the German clan Allais. A pretty decent team, and one that had the capability of giving us a really hard time, and they did not disappoint. They played with determination and focus, but alas, they were not able to counter us, and we managed to win the grand final, putting us firmly into day two, which was always going to be slightly harder than day one. Day two groupings came out and we were drawn in a group that consisted of Tertia, Zenith and Raid. All these teams are very good and everybody knows Raid. We were initially drawn against Tertia, who were very, very capable indeed and a very dangerous opponent. The situation was not made any easier with our team struggling to field a complete team. The problem being was it was Saturday and despite having a team of 10, most had other real-life commitments that now needed to be honoured. Little did we know at this stage that our night would get worse. Our first game on Halas against Tertia wasn't a total disaster despite only managing to field a team of six. We got close, but alas, the, numer the number superiority of Tertia was a tank too far. Meanwhile, in the background, our team captain was cajoling, persuading and doing his very best to get those who had their real life commitments to actually roll up and play a few games. At the same time, our first team was in a place even worse than ours. Whilst we were struggling to get one more player, our first team, the main team, only had five. Medical emergencies and other more important real life matters is intervened to deplete the team to, alm to almost entirely to the point where they would not progress at all in day two. This was quite a blow and thankfully we didn't find out until we crashed to Tesha. Second game we managed to field a full team, but one of our players persuaded, one of the players that we persuaded to drop their real life activities had massive ping issues. I mean, they were after all not sat at home, but they were out and about somewhere. Tesha beat us convincingly, but being this as double elimination, we would always be able to come back, potentially. Our next opponent was going to be Zenith's second team, and it was at this stage that we were told that the first team was out, simple as that. This now put pressure on us to now perform, because if we were not able to get into the grand final on day two, plus getting into day three, that our clan's aims for top eight would be over before it even started. It's at this point I need to draw your attention to the idea of Vale's second team. Now, our second team is not actually to try hard. That's the idea of the first team. The second team is to rotate the players around to ensure that we can develop the first team and the players within the clan to give those who aren't fully first team ready the chance to get much needed experience and to actually rest some of the first team players from time to time. I mean, don't get me wrong, going into training rooms is great, but it's not the same as actually playing. So the second team plays a vital role, but it's not expected to sort of carry the team through. As a second team, we don't train because we're not a set team. We're kind of thrown together at the last minute. We have basic stats, nothing major, and a lot of them are developed literally four or five minutes before we roll out into the next battle. This is not because we don't care or we think we're super duper players as such, but because the idea of the second team is more of a training ground. All that, however, was now going to be thrown out the window with the first team crashing out. Thankfully, the first team caller was now able to join our Discord VC and run through some strats that had been developed for the first team and give us some much needed encouragement and direction. 
out we rolled against Zenith. And despite them being the Zenith's second team, they were really tricky indeed, pushing us into a decider. I fully admit we were tense, what with the pressure to get into day three now on our shoulders. And with that pressure, little mistakes creep in as you hold your iPad a little bit tighter. Zenith's second team gave us a very good run for our money. But with our newfound focus, we were able to, f to ride that storm and throw us a lifeline for the lower bracket final. It was either Raid or Tertia. It was eventually Tertia. And once again, we were to roll out against the team that had turned us over earlier in the evening. This time, however, we had a different determination. We were more focused and we were now getting encouragement from other members of the clan. We felt that if we could just hold out against Tertia, we would be in with a chance. How we trotted into Fort Despair. We had gone over the tactics we had been given, our assigned roles, and we'd been given our assigned positions. To say the first game was tentative would be an understatement. Yes, we had managed to get an early cap lead, putting the pressure onto Tertia, but neither team wanted to show our hand. It's at this point that loads of stupid thoughts go through your head. Do you move position? Do you shoot at targets, knowing you won't pen and therefore giving away your unspotted position? Do you push when you don't need to? And such things. As viewers, it no doubt looks dull and boring that the teams are doing nothing other than holding positions. But I can assure you that being sat in the player's chair and sitting in a position for a few minutes watching the points tick up and trying to anticipate the enemy's movement is both nerve-wracking and tense. It's at this point that my clan wall's inexperience again came along. I moved out of position. I was assigned to cover the A-cap with another yo and therefore to reset it. And I had it in my mind that, I had, they, they, that the Persian were going to rotate for a push onto C through the middle. Obviously they weren't going to do that. After all, the last time we'd seen anybody, they had been camped almost entirely at the back of the A-cap. But strange things go through your mind. And for almost the entirety of the game, Tertia had a 1-1-3 baiting us, wanting us to shoot him or push onto him. And you know what? It's a really, really hard temptation to resist. Tertia then made their move straight into the A-cap. Me being out of position, I was unable to reset it and now we we're on the back foot and we needed to counter push and counter push quickly. This we did and that push into A while shooting the I-7 and the 113 allowed us to do this and we managed to take the 113 out the game in the nick of time, literally. I mean, Tertia was sort of like 10 points away from winning. We denied them the victory. We pushed into A, we focused on the IS-7, and we won on points. This was tantalizingly close, and no doubt many of those who were lucky enough to be watching felt that we, as a team, had got really lucky and we didn't deserve to win. I admit, we did have a little bit of luck to an extent, but we planned the push and we executed it correctly. So, not being deserving the win? I draw a line there. We were one up against Tertia, and the next game was going to be tough. Both of us needed to win to get into day three. Our roles were once again assigned, and this time we were going to take the fight to Tertia. We were going to be aggressive, and we were going to try and force them to play our game and not theirs. I now jumped into a clan with the aim of being on the B cap area and being a nuisance, nothing more. Kind of like a bait. The tactic worked. Okay, I got wrecked pretty easily, but I had also tied up three of their tanks, their mouse and their two crams, whilst our heavies managed to push the top flank and use their, no their, their numbers to our advantage. We had beaten an incredibly tough enemy and we managed to get into the grand final. Full credit to Tertia, however, they were really tough to beat and they really made us work hard for those wins. But boy, was it exhilarating. It was grand final time and we were up against Raid. Wow. 
We all knew we didn't really have much of a chance against them. We had no training. We had not gone over multiple strats for the maps or the other normal stuff that the top teams do. Raid were always going to be difficult and boy they were. It's as simple as that. We got steamrolled. But wow, what an experience it was to face such a team at such a level. Earlier in the day, I had already told Raid Falcon, one of the players, that if I'm playing and we get to face Raid, it would be one hell of an experience for me. And now we did. And despite getting totally steamrolled, coming out of the second game with top damage made me feel good. Although I suspect Raid let that happen. <laughs> we have made it into day three, however. Drawn in a group that includes Loka, APA, Asp, Oretti, and CHRD. All top clans in their own right, and equally difficult opponents to face. I'm not going to lie, it's not going to be an easy day for us. It will be truly, truly difficult. But hey, for me, it's both exciting and something to treasure. I have to admit, my experience is helping me understand more and more some of the things that happen during Clan Wars games, which, as a commentator, I have sometimes misread or misunderstood. And that, for me, is invaluable. I won't be so quick in the future to call out certain things, now that I have some experience of those things myself. And I will come with a newfound respect and understanding. My journey, however, isn't over. Well, not just yet. And I shall continue to be excited and giddy like a school kid. Which may seem odd to many of you, but believe me, having the chance to play at this level against some of the very best on the EU server is like a dream come true. And it's an experience I really do cherish. I would also like to extend a big, massive, huge thanks to my clan. Because they've given me this opportunity. And, despite my poor stats and despite my overall general nabbishness, they have been incredibly supportive, encouraging me all the time, and above all, made me feel like an important member of the team. I was always worried that I would be treated like a third wheel, snubbed because of my lack of skills, but it's been totally the opposite. I have been warmly welcomed, helped along the way, and above all, encouraged and given roles that suit my skill. For that, I can never thank my clan and the team enough. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been my, my vlog for Clan Wars. Prove your skill number two. Well, hopefully you'll join me again tonight as we roll out on day three. And let's see how we do. Until the next time, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you all again soon. And with that, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking, because that's what it's all about, having fun. Peace.